Brother Van wants to. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. What's this brother's name? Brother Newell. Brother, brother Newell. George Newell. Thank you, Lord. I had been trying to stay within bounds. But when Brother Newell came up, he just released me, sort of like Brother Garden, Lily. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Garden, Lily can do something I haven't become sufficiently uninhibited enough to do yet. I've got some hard bottom shoes and I've had dancing in my feet so much I asked the Lord to give me a pair of shoes I could move me. <laughs> the Lord blessed me with a pair of Italian shoes. Praise the Lord. I've got to try to do something which is extremely difficult. I don't understand any of this. I was born in this town. My father worked at L.S. Ayers. I was born in white people's kitchen. I know this town, and when Pastor Bill said that the waiting was going to be here a second time, I said, Lord, that's strange. That's strange. I was walking down the street yesterday, and a fellow that I went to school with, Herschel Turner, who lives in Grand Rapids, met me on the corner. But I just saw him in Grand Rapids last week. He was driving by and hollered. So many peculiar things. I feel very funny. My mother's buried here, and I don't often come to her grave. And I was sitting in a meeting praying that the Lord would be with her spirit. It's just all so unusual. This people that you are. I really feel still feel like a spectator, wondering how I got here and seeing myself sit here and somehow the Lord draws me back and I look out and I see myself here. And I'm trying to figure it all out, embracing Brother Him, a white man who's become a brother. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's not what's on my heart to say, but I don't understand it. Many of my brothers and sisters in Indianapolis need you, they need you, they need you, they need you. But if I would call them and say, come, they, they would think I was having a moment of delusion. 
to ask them to come to the Hilton to a religious meeting. There has to be a purpose, though, for Indianapolis, for you to have come here twice. <clears throat> for the oppressed and the destitute and the despondent and the alienated, yeah. for the light that's here, there has to be a purpose for Indianapolis. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Pastor Jim Wright came to Muskegon and the people of Muskegon started going out and they brought all kinds of people in. They converted an alcoholic. Thank you, Jesus. I've never seen an alcoholic converted except in an AAA meeting. And there's a lot of work to be done with that alco alcoholic, but he was converted when, when Brother Wright was there. And I sat with him and cried. Pastor, oh Lord, I didn't come here to say all this. I, I want to be obedient. I, I'm, just, I'm just blessed to sit here and watch and observe. Pastor Bill gave us an assignment. And I love people, Matthew 25 is my scripture. I was pastoring when I read it. And I came to realize the church is not witnessing according to Matthew 25, 31. Jesus. On Sunday, the least are not there. The people in the wheelchairs are not there. The crippled are not there. The hungry are not there. The alcoholics are not there. The oppressed are not there. The young women who are participating in illicit sexual activity are not there on Sunday and when they come the church is not ready. That's a Jesus. Jesus. Most of the churches, if I would take one of the people that God has blessed me to counsel over the last eight years, it would scare the church out. To Jesus. <clears throat> Bless you, Jesus. I've sent people all over town and They've said, Reverend Covington, I'm not going back to that church again because the church doesn't understand. But that Pastor Bill gave us an assignment. Pastor Bill said, I'd like for all of you who will fast until you have shed tears for the lost to raise your hand. Oh, and I made the mistake of raising my hand. I know how to fast. I thought I knew how to cry. But I'm telling you, I was priming, trying to like prime the old pump in the country. I primed and I primed and I had a terrible time trying to prime some tears for the lost, the people who I've worked with. And I told them the way it started, I started thinking about the estrangement in my own life to realize that I am not yet where I want to be. There's lostness still in my own life and I got just a little dampness. Then I started thinking about this estrangement in my own family, and I got a little more dampness. And then I started thinking about the problems of the world, but I didn't get the tears until I talked with this converted alcoholic. And he said to me, he said, Reverend Covington, I need the prayers of the church because I've been battling alcohol for 40 years. I got my tears. And now I've added to my prayer every time I eat, every time I go down on my knees a prayer for the lost. But the thing I came to say, and I want to say it and sit down because this time is too precious. <laughs> I'm in a dilemma. Family is, is very personal to all of us, especially the black family, because that's all we ever had. This was our generation to be a family. As I said, my mother's buried here. After my mother passed, my father remarried. We have a beautiful mother. She, I've asked your prayers for her. She has cancer. A woman here, I'm sorry she isn't here this morning. I called her. She said that she's going to come, however, at least one session this week. Her husband is sick. But I sent her a copy of your book, Pastor Him. And she said she doesn't read books often, but it's one she read. And she said she has sent four copies to friends of hers. So she's going to be here. Family is important. This was our generation to be a family. I, I have a beautiful family. We were just knit. We were knit. We were knit. We were knit. We were knit. Satan couldn't, couldn't bother us. We, we were a wonderful family. We had joy. 
We ate at the table with joy. We smiled. I said, Jesus. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I'll go anywhere, I'll do anything, but two things I'd like to have from you. I'd like to have always the solidarity and peace and happiness of my family and my health. But I got in a ministry, and I got to a point where I was committed to it, I was enthused about it, and I saw estrangement in my own family, and I could not. I, I don't know how to talk about it, and when I heard this brother talk about <coughs> his family, Jesus. Thank we're you, still a beautiful family, but we're estranged. We grew up in the church. We know the church, but in these years of doing the kind of ministry that I've done, we just haven't had the continuity with one church, and the churches that we go to don't understand. They do not understand. They do not. Prior to going to West Shore, my wife goes to church, I tell her, honey, I said, I don't know why you go, because you give more than you get. She told me Sunday, she said, I'm going over here to service, and then after I leave here, because she was burdened, I'm going over here. I said, don't go over there, honey. If you go to the one service, go home. I said, because they're going to take more of you than you, can, you can give, than you can get. I think if, if I could have, and looking back isn't good in the Lord, but I think if when I started with West Shore, I could have gotten them all involved, maybe some of these moments of stress and anguish I could have avoided. But we're a family under stress. And I guess the greatest stress I see in the eyes of that, <clears throat> that angel, which is my daughter Valerie. She's an angel. She's just an angel. I will never forget Scott Depot. I will never forget them. I will never forget them. Pastor Bill and Pastor Dan and the whole staff, they offered me the opportunity to bring them all over there, Valerie and Jonathan, on scholarship. But you don't know, church, you sit here, and I said you just don't know. You don't know what it's like. I hear brothers talk about leaving the church and making changes. You do not know what it's like when your family has built their life on the church, and the black church is all we've got as a black family. <clears throat> and when that church has lost its relevance, oh, Lord, help me, help me, Lord. Help, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me. Help me, Lord. Encourage and strengthen. Help me, Lord. Encourage Oh, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. I love the church. I love the church. I love the church. I love the church. But the church has gotten sidetracked on issues. Oh, Jesus, help me. <clears throat> Bishops and oh, Lord, help me. Lord, I love my brothers. The church has gotten sidetracked. People are going to church on Sunday hungry and going away hungry. Oh, Not only leaving hungry, they are leaving with alienation that they got from going. Oh, I've seen people die in the church from the stress. And some of you, you are a family. You are a family here. I don't know how I got here. I don't know what I did to deserve coming. But I'm telling you, you are a family. Bless Jesus. Oh, God. Bless Jesus. Oh, bless Jesus. Oh, Jesus. And you know, if I had allowed myself, and, and I, I want to be faithful past him, and I just want to say what's on my heart and sit down, because I know there's so many of you, and it's just time is so precious, but... If I had allowed myself to listen to the adversary and say that I'm not going to be with those white folks, I'd have missed a blessing. Oh, bless you, Jesus. <laughs> and I'm telling you, if I allow myself to sit here and look at you as white folk and, and say to myself, my brothers are not going to understand, and my first commi commitment and obligation is to black folk, therefore I can't continue to enjoy the blessing that the law is making available, I'm telling you, I think I'd be lost. That's your heart. Encourage him, Jesus. Encourage I don't know why. I don't know what, what all the Lord's doing. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm telling you, the Lord's blessing me. Hallelujah. Encourage him, Jesus. Encourage 
And I'm not just talking about Jesus. I'm not just talking about tangibly either. Thank you, Father. I'm talking about the Lord's doing something for my soul because I walked in this town. I've gone into white churches all my bless life. I hear brothers talking about since he was seven. I've been searching, oh, just you. looking for a people oh. to manifest yes, humanness and love and yes, justice yes. and equity. Yes. And to be able to say I'm not all that concerned about denomination and right. building and doctrine and right. theology. Yes. In all those years, in all those years of going in the back of white churches as a little boy, I don't recall one white pastor stopping and walking to the step and saying, Son, what are you here for? The Lord loves you. Yeah. Not one. Oh, 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 Jesus. But I'm telling you, you balanced it all out. You balanced the book. Oh. When, when Pastor Wright was preaching one night after the service, and I thank God for Pastor Wright, I'm looking forward to getting down to Maranatha too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just trusting. He was preaching one night, and we had prayer with some people twice. The Lord just lifted me up out of myself. Amen. And the Lord told me one night, he said, Van, come on over. He said, Van, you've crossed over. I'm still trying to figure out what he meant. <laughs> But I think the Lord was saying you, you've had some hard times, you've had some struggles, and you've been trying to find the secret of the mystery of my purpose through Jesus Christ, and now I'm bringing you in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the great love. Continued on cassette number eight. Thank you.